Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It says on my screen that everything is working. It says that in 30 seconds, we will start this lesson about stressful things. You might wonder if I'm stressed when I do a lesson in the morning. I'm not usually. I'm usually pretty excited. So, give me a moment here just to check to make sure everything's working. It looks like everything is. I'm happy about that. There's less stress in my life when everything works properly. That's a that's a nice thing. So, we're starting in about three seconds. Two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about stressful things. Life has a funny way of being stressful sometimes and I guess it's not actually funny is it? Stress is not a nice thing. You might have stress in life. You might have stress at work. You might have stress at school. In this English lesson, I'm going to talk about all of those stressful things that we have in life as human beings. All of these stressful situations. Um hopefully, you understand what stress is. Stress is a feeling of worry, a feeling of anxiety. Um the most common way to describe it in English, of course, is to say that you are stressed. You're feeling stressed. Um I have a few things I have to do today and I'm a little bit stressed about them. So, I'm a little bit worried. I have a little bit of anxiety but today, I just uh, hope that you are able to learn a lot of new English words and phrases while we talk about stressful things. Before we get started, just a couple things. Earlier in the chat, someone was asking, is this live or is this a premiere? And this is definitely live. I am right here sitting in my living room, studio, office, whatever you wanna call it. Uh it is 31 on a Friday morning here in Ontario, Canada and I am live. So, if you have questions during this lesson, please ask them using the form. Uh if you want to have exciting conversations in the chat, on my screen, the chat's over there. It might be below. Please keep those in English. Uh thanks to Dave and Todd for being here to uh to moderate the chat. I wanna say a few good mornings. Good morning to Sonia and Sia's friend and to speak English with this guy. As I scroll back, I see that Eugene is here from Etobicoke. Maria C. Natalia Belgrade is here. Hello to both of you as well. I know Audie and Wanda and Lolly Lolly and Key Park. Apple the Frog is here as well. Apple the Frog might be feeling a bit of stress because Apple said they are in a play this coming Monday, I believe it was. But hello to all of you. Hello to Musa and Maria C. and Rachel Green. And all of the regular names that I see in the chat. Um, I think I need a little drink already this morning. Just a little sip of tea before we get started. I think I mentioned if you have a question, please use the form that will be linked in the chat and I'll be happy to uh to to have a look at that question and see what we can do. But uh again, let's keep things on topic with the question, okay? Uh questions. Uh let's get started. A job interview. So, I picked this one because I was trying to think of one of the most stressful things that I've experienced in my life and I must say that a job interview is very, very stressful. You go to a place where they are hiring people. You apply for a job. They might call you and say, hey, we'd like you to come in for an interview and you go in and you talk to Uh, a few of the people who work there, they ask you lots of questions and you try your best to explain who you are and how you could be a benefit to their company. So, a job interview, definitely stressful. By the way, I do have a an English lesson about job interviews. Maybe Dave or Todd could dig that up and link it in the chat if you're looking for it. Common job interview questions and uh maybe if you prepare for an interview, it's less stressful. I think that's how it works. The first day of school. So, I don't experience this the same way a student would but if any of you are students or if you have kids who still go to school, the first day of school can be very stressful. In Ontario, Canada, kids spend most of the summer playing and enjoying themselves and then as the end of August comes, they might start to feel a bit of stress because the first day of school is usually the day after Labor Day. We have a holiday in September and then school begins. I know in other places in North America, school starts a few days or weeks earlier but here, the first day of school can certainly be a stressful event. 
and of course, the first day of work. Let's say you go to a job interview and they call and say you got the job. You would be excited but you might be a little bit nervous for your first day of work because you don't know anyone necessarily. Uh you're not sure what they're going to ask you to do maybe. So, your first day of work can be very stressful. I know for me, when I started my current job, I was very stressed on my first day of work because I wasn't sure how well the students were going to like me or listen to me in my classrooms. So, the first day of work can be very, very stressful. Well, this is kind of the opposite, isn't it? The opposite of the first day of work would be getting fired or losing your job and let me explain the difference between the two. When you get fired, it means your boss talks to you and says, we are, we no longer need you and generally, you get fired after you've done something wrong at work. So, maybe you're building things at work and you build it wrong all the time and your boss has told you over and over again how to do it correctly um and you keep doing it wrong, they might eventually just fire you. When you lose your job, it doesn't mean you were doing anything wrong although it could mean that but maybe they just don't need you anymore. Maybe there is there are 500 people at the factory and they only need 450 people next year. So, they might come to you and say, look, we are going to um you're gonna be laid off, we would say in English in my part of the world. You would lose your job but definitely um Losing your job or getting fired is very stressful because you're not sure where are you gonna get another job? How are you going to pay your bills if you don't have a paycheck? Losing something. This is a general statement. Um I have in the past lost my phone. I have in the past lost my keys. Uh, I have in the I've never lost any of my children although once at the mall, one of our children was gone for like 30 seconds and we panicked. It's very stressful um but we're talking about things, not people. Um when you lose your keys, when you lose your phone, when you lose your wallet, that is very, very stressful. I think the most stressful of all of those would be when you lose your wallet. Uh, and you try to figure out where did I use my wallet last? Um what's the last thing I did with it? Definitely a very, very stressful situation. Running late. So, this morning, I was running late. Jen and I were both trying to brush our teeth at the same time. Uh Jen was heading out this morning to bring the kids to school uh and I was trying to get ready for my live lesson um and so, I was running late. When you are late for work, when you're late for an appointment, when you're late for a meeting. Uh sometimes I'm late for class at school. The bell goes at our school saying that class uh class has begun and I'm still running down the hallway with my books and laptop. So, um definitely um yes, uh running late is very, very, very stressful. Car won't start. So, this is one that uh I think causes a lot of stress especially if this is happening at the same time. If your car won't start and you need your car to start, it can be very stressful. Sometimes you get up in the morning and uh you're running a bit late and you jump in your car and you turn the key and instead of starting the car doesn't make any sound at all. Um that's stressful and then you have to call a tow truck uh or you have to try and get your car to a garage or maybe someone needs to come with booster cables and hook their car up to your car so that um they can boost you. So, anyways, having uh, a car that won't start, certainly a stressful situation. Being broke or having no money which are is it's the same thing. Um when I was a lot younger, there was a time where I lived in Quebec City. Um I worked in a restaurant and uh I was very broke. I did not have a lot of money. I had enough money to pay rent Um but sometimes at the end of the month, uh I would eat oatmeal (laughs) for a few days in a row because I didn't have enough money to buy groceries. So, that's when I was about I think 22, uh 21, 22. Uh I lived in Quebec. I had a nice job but it was only three nights a week and once I paid my rent and paid my bills, I didn't always have a lot of money left over. So, that was stressful. Um it's stressful when you don't have enough money or when you are broke. 
death. So, I've been meaning to do a lesson on this at some point but I just don't know how to do it in a way that respectful. It's a difficult topic. I do want to cover all the topics in life but certainly when you have when someone you know passes away, that's another way in English that we talk about death or we might say the family is sad because there was a death in the family which means maybe an uncle or a cousin uh, or a grandparent passed away but death is certainly very very stressful especially when someone dies very young. When someone dies and they're in their 30s or 40s or 50s especially if they're married and have children. It's very very stressful on the uh, person who's left behind. So, death, I'm not gonna say that one kind of death is more stressful than another but certainly a death of a friend, death in the family. Uh, When someone you know passes away, it causes stress uh, in all of the people who are connected to the person who has died. Injury. So, I had an injury like this when I was a kid. Uh an injury can cause a lot of stress. When I was a kid, um I had a cast like that on my right hand or right arm and that's also the hand that I write with. I'm right-handed. So, when you have an injury, it's stressful. When you injure something like your hand or one of your legs, um it's even more stressful because if you injure the hand that you use all the time to write, you can't write or maybe you can't use the mouse on the computer. If you injure your legs, you can't walk and so not only is there the stress caused from the pain of the injury, there's the stress caused by um, having a difficult time leading a normal life. So, injuries definitely stressful as well. And then a bad bot. I feel bad for this. This is a picture from a free picture website but I've used this picture a lot. I usually use this picture when I have to when someone angry uh, when I need a picture of someone angry but a bad boss or a bad manager at work can cause a lot of stress. If you work somewhere where your boss yells at you all the time, if you work somewhere where um you can you do everything to the best of your abilities but your boss still finds something wrong that you've done. If you have a boss who tells you what to do every minute of the day instead of trusting you to do the work, um that can cause a lot of stress and we would call that a bad boss. Um and the strong phrase in English that people would say if they were talking with a friend, they would just say, ah, I hate my boss. Now, hate is a very strong word but we often use it in English to talk about situations like that. Do you want pizza? No, no, I hate pizza. How's work? Oh, I hate my boss. He's driving me crazy. So, it doesn't mean you actually like hate them. Like you're not gonna yell at them or anything like that. It just means you have a bad boss and they are not very pleasant. Illness or sickness. So, sometimes people ask what's the difference between illness and sickness. They are the same thing. Um We usually in English, instead of saying he has an illness or they have a sickness, we usually just say they're sick. Um but if you uh, have an illness or if you have sickness, um it could be very stressful. Most people like to live a normal life. I think everyone likes to live a normal life. When you are sick and you can't go to work, when you are sick and um you can't look at a computer screen because it makes your head feel funny. That's what I had when I had COVID. I couldn't look at a computer screen. It could be very, very stressful and very, very challenging. Hey, let's look at some questions. Let me get to the question form. Looks like we do have some questions rolling in. Um Ruslan says, hello, dear teacher Bob. Could you name a movie and a song that would help you get rid of stress? Best wishes, sir. Anything by the Beatles will I usually get rid of stress. Um I just all of the Beatles songs make me feel happy. Um and then a movie that would get rid of stress. That's a difficult one. Um I'm not sure. I think I would def- I would recommend a song. I'm not sure if I would recommend a movie. I find s- music is usually the best way to get rid of stress, Ruslan. Uh let's see here. Yaroslav, morning the wisest teacher, Bob. Hi, Yaroslav. Hope you're doing well. How to manage stressful situations when working with students. <laughs> Thank you. Stay safe. You always You always have to remember they're just kids. 
I have very little patience for adults. I feel like adults should be kind. They should do good things. They should work hard. But I have um, a limitless amount of patience for students because I feel like students are young and they are just trying to do their best and they are trying to learn. So, I usually give them the benefit of the doubt. What that means is that if a student's acting badly in my class, I try to just encourage them and be kind to them so that they'll do better and I try to create a classroom where everyone uh, can sense that it's a place of happiness. I don't always succeed. <laughs> it's very, very difficult sometimes. From Sia's friend, bonjour Bob, j'espère que tu n'es pas stressé aujourd'hui. Merci pour la leçon. Passe une bonne a uh, bonne journée. Merci beaucoup pour ça et uh, je vais répondre en anglais. I'm gonna answer in English. So, I hope that you are not stressed today. Thank you for the lesson. Have a good day. Um, well, I would wish the same to you, see us friend. Um, uh, have a good day and uh, I hope you don't have stress in your day either. Uh, let's see here. Sayla says, hi, Bob. Nice to be here. One of the stressful things is marriage. I advise everyone to come early and not wait for a perfect life partner. Finding a partner, uh, getting married, um, being married uh, can all be very, very stressful. Jen and I have what I would consider a really good marriage. Jen and I love each other dearly but we still fight sometimes. We still have arguments. Um, it is enjoyable but also a lot of hard work to be with the same person for your whole life. Um, but I think it's incredibly uh, rewarding by the way. I think that it's a good thing but yes, marriage can be stressful because sometimes a husband and wife don't agree on things and then you have to figure out how to come to an agreement and that can be uh that can be challenging. Mohammed says, hi, teacher Bob. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, Mohammed. Can I learn English by Anki and short stories in English by Ollie Richards book? Thanks a lot. So, Anki is amazing. It's like a flashcard software. Um Ollie Richards has really cool books um and I would say both are a great first step. Um with Anki, you're learning vocabulary. With Ollie, you're learning, you're reading and learning uh, English through reading. Uh, if you can get the audio version of his books, you'll be practicing your listening but what you'll be missing is uh, practicing your writing and speaking. So, make sure you find time to do that as well. Um let's see here. Natalia Belgrade. Hi, Natalia. Hi, Bob. Could you please share with us your way to be relaxed in some stressful time? Wish you all less stress in your your life. I'm gonna put your in there. Um probably for me uh two things. I need to eat healthy and I need to go for a walk. I'm going for a walk every morning reduces my stress through the rest of the day. It's been scientifically proven that exercise just reduces stress. Uh, and then if I was to mention a third thing, it would be getting enough sleep. Those three things I think are very, very helpful. Uh De Choi, how can you help your children when they are facing stressful things? So, a couple things with kids. And I'm not going to say I'm an expert but here's what I would say. One, be patient. Two, realize that kids are going to make mistakes and as a dad, I I fail at this a lot. Sometimes I forget to be patient with my kids but um you have to remember that children are learning and you can't expect them to always know what to do in a stressful situation. And then the last thing I would say is this. It's important to let kids fail. I think when kids are rewarded all the time, even when they do something badly, I don't think that's good. I think it's good for children to do things where they succeed but I think it's okay to fail sometimes and learn a lesson from it. Let's see here. I was gonna read the chat a bit more. I see Dulio Silva is in the chat. Hi, Dulio. Um let me see here. Uh Eugene says, take a hot bath to reduce stress. That's a great answer as well. Um let's see here. Scroll down. Let me get to the next question. Um from Kostya. Hello, teacher Bob. Hope you'll have a great day today. I hope you do too. Is there a difference between stressed and stressed out? Like maybe they have different emotional coloring. They're pretty much the same. Like I could say, oh, I'm so stressed or I might say, oh, I'm stressed out. Both of those sentences, the structure's a little different but the meaning is the same. 
Um so something for me that stresses me is running late. If I'm late that's I could say oh I'm stressed out because I'm late for work or ah oh, I'm stressed because I'm late for work. Those those sentences would mean exactly the same thing. Um Ziv in the chat says drink cold water to relax. That's a good idea too. And Francisco says take a chill pill. So, there's no actual pill called a chill pill. It's just a funny phrase that uh, uh that we say to each other. If someone's like getting all stressed, you might say, ah, take a chill pill. Uh let's see here. Ario says, Ola, Mr. Bob, I didn't feel stressed watching the lessons out of topic. You didn't do a lot. Oh, and you don't do a live stream on Saturday anymore. So, I'm just uh working my way back into a routine. Um so, Ario, I'm not sure. I might wait till the weather's warmer and do some Saturday live streams outside. Uh but right now, I'm just gonna uh it's a little bit busy because it's the beginning of the semester as well. So, I'm going to uh just hold off a little bit. Eugene in the chat says, do meditation. Another great way to de-stress by the way. Um let's see here. Let me get to the next question. Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Hi, Bob. What are the differences between get it together, pull yourself together and get a grip and what situations do you use them? Thank you for awesome lessons. Uh you're welcome by the way. Uh so, Kimmy and Kiwi, all of those phrases are very direct. They're not polite but they're kind of a very direct way to tell someone to calm down. So, let's say someone drove their car in the ditch. So, they had a car accident and when you get there, they're like, I can't believe this happened. My car's in the ditch and I just bought it and I don't have insurance and my parents are gonna be so angry with me and they're just super emotional. If you know them well, you might say, hey, get it together or pull yourself together or get a grip and all of those phrases mean just calm down a little bit. You're you're too emotional for the situation that you are in. Uh let's see here. Lemon Cute says, hi, Bob. I'm under a lot of pressure because of the epidemic situation at school. My class is infected with COVID a lot and we'll probably have to take online class again. Well, I feel bad for you, Lemon but uh just power through. Um hopefully, you can do the online learning and hopefully, uh if that happens, you do get back to in-person learning quickly after that. Uh let's see here. I'll do a couple more questions. Um from Katarina, hi from Germany in May 2022 or 2022. I will travel to Toronto for the first time. Please give me some hints to deal with the stressful situation at the airport entering Canada. Bring a book. Whenever you travel, bring a book. I hope you like to read because if you end up in line, um make sure you uh bring a phone that's charged. Uh make sure uh you have something to entertain yourself with uh and hopefully, you're traveling with other people because when the reason I say this is there are a lot of lines. You're gonna end up waiting in line a lot if you travel these days. So, I would say uh make sure you have your passport and all your papers uh and make sure you um either bring a person to talk to <laughs> or bring a book to read while you're waiting in line. Um Cater says, I wanna be your student. At this time, I don't offer online classes, Cater but uh maybe at some point in the future, I will explore that. Uh, let's get back to the lesson. People, moving. So, my British cousins say move house. He's gonna move house. I don't know the exact phrase. In Canada, we just say moving. He's moving. She's moving. When are you moving? I'm going to be moving this summer. I, I'm not by the way. That's just an example but moving can be very stressful. When you uh live in an apartment or a house and you have to pack up all your things uh and then move to another place to live, it can be very stressful. You don't know who your neighbors are going to be. You don't know necessarily what the neighborhood is like. So, moving can be very very stressful as well. Um thankfully, Jen and I have only moved once. <laughs> we used to live in town and then we moved to this farm and I don't think we're gonna move anytime soon. We're gonna be here for quite a while. Social situation. So, I actually have a social situation um next weekend and I haven't actually been in a social situation for a, a couple of years uh because of COVID but social situations, parties, uh work parties, um 
when you need to go somewhere where there's a lot of people and you need to talk to them. Social situations can be awkward. That means you don't know what to talk about. It can be stressful because uh people might ask you a lot of questions or you might be worried what if no one talks to me, right? Because in a social situation, there's little groups of people talking and you might not know who to talk to when you are there but definitely social situations can cause stress. Having a baby. So, having a baby. So, we have five kids. Having a baby is incredibly in like it's incredibly joyful. It's uh it brings a lot of happiness into your home. Having a baby is a wonderful thing but at the same time, it's very stressful. Um and especially the day you go to the hospital. So, each time we went to the hospital when Jen uh was giving birth to one of our kids. Um I'm not gonna give too much information but each birth w- happened completely differently than the other. So, it was always a stressful situation for us. Um pregnancy itself. Um I think our first pregnancy when Jen was first pregnant with our first child, it was stressful but Jen read a lot of books and she had friends who were also uh having babies around the same time. But uh, actually going to the hospital I think was more stressful for me uh than Jen. Maybe we'll do a um maybe we'll do an English lesson together about um pregnancy and giving birth someday. Well, I'll talk to Jen and see if she'll agree to that. She might be stressed to be in a video though. Getting married. So, this was mentioned earlier. Um there's a number of stresses with getting married. There's the actual wedding day. The day you get married can be very stressful when you go to a church or a temple or the city hall or wherever you're going to to go for the wedding um depending on your religion or if it's non-religious. Um it can be stressful. There's lots of family. There's lots of friends. Sometimes the parents of the groom and the parents of the bride have their own ideas about how the wedding should go. Um and then actually being married can be stressful. Um after the wedding day uh once you start to live together, the first few months, it can be stressful learning to live with another person but I think it's worth it by the way. Uncertainty. So, I just put a big question mark for this one. Uncertainty is when you are not certain about something in the future. Maybe you are in school and you don't know if you're going to get a job after you graduate. So, there's uncertainty there. Maybe you just bought a used car and you're not sure if it's going to break down on you. There's some uncertainty there. Um maybe you lost your job and you're not sure if you'll be able to find another one. There's uncertainty. So, uncertainty is any time in life um when you're not sure what the future holds, okay? Um I even have it as a farmer. Sometimes I'm trying to do things where we need it to be sunny for three or four days in a row and then I have some uncertainty whether I should start outdoor work because sometimes the weather changes. Divorce. So, we've gone to the other end of marriage. So, getting married or being in a marriage can be stressful. Hopefully, it's not um but certainly divorce uh is stressful. Divorce is more stressful I think if there are children involved. Sometimes people get married and they have some children and then they get a divorce. Um so, that's how we talk about it in English as well. We say oh um Joe and Jill are getting a divorce. Um Before you're divorced, usually couples will be separated. When you're separated, it means that you're just not living together anymore. So, often when a couple starts to fight, one of uh one of the spouses will move out and they will be separated. Maybe the uh the husband will get an apartment somewhere or maybe um yeah, maybe someone will move back in with their parents in the relationship. So, they'll be separated then eventually they might be divorced. So, separation is the choice to not live together. Divorce is the legal separation so that you are no longer married. Getting arrested. <laughs> now, I don't know a lot about this one but I think getting arrested is probably stressful. Um if you've uh lived a life of crime, if you've committed a lot of crime, um I think that you uh would be really stressed if you got arrested. If the police came to your door and put handcuffs on you. I think you would feel like oh no, I've done something horribly wrong 
and now I am going to jail. Retirement. So interestingly enough, a lot of people look forward to being retired. Um and I think that sometimes people retire and they don't know what to do with themselves. That's how we would describe it. Maybe they've gone to work every day for 35 years and they really enjoyed their job and now they're 65 or 70 and they're retired and they don't know what to do every morning. They have breakfast and they're kind of bored. So, retirement I think is 99% awesome but for 1% of the people um it might be a little bit stressful where they maybe they don't have friends to hang out with. Maybe their friends are still working but definitely it can be a bit stressful. And then going bankrupt. So, this is when you are running a business and you aren't making enough money to pay your bills um and then eventually your business might declare bankruptcy. When you're bankrupt, it means you don't have any money. You 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 can't pay your rent. You can't pay your bills um and it's just very very difficult and challenging and certainly extremely stressful. Hey, let's get to questions. I do wanna jump to the chat and say, Zeev said, I'm divorced and I like it better than marriage. So, I do, I should make sure I, I'm respectful of the fact that I do understand that for some people, marriage works well and for some people, a divorce might be um a better option. I think sometimes as Zeev says, sometimes you have to make a choice that's good for you. So, Zeev, I just wanna say, I respect your decision there. Uh Madi says hello to Bob and others. Cool. Uh Lolly says I never got arrested. That's really good. Hey, I'm gonna just switch up and we're going to go into members only chat mode. Uh as I do that, let me just mention to everyone who's watching um even though we're in members only chat mode, the lesson will continue in about five or ten minutes. So, you don't don't leave. (laughs) Um I've noticed that when I do members only chat Uh, Sometimes people don't watch anymore but the lesson will, I will finish the lesson in about 10 minutes. So, if you don't wanna stick around for members only chat, do come back in about 10 minutes and I'll finish the lesson. Uh let's see here. Lolly or let's see here. Eugene says, I always arrested bad people before. Cool. Rod's here. Hey, Rod. Good to see you. Bye, everyone. Gotta go. Just a quick stop. Thanks for stopping by, Rod. That's awesome of you. So, I will continue on the questions over there. And I will um let's see here. Gonna find a next question that works well. A few of these questions aren't related to the topic. Let's see here. Joke. Scientist. Don't be stressed. Some rocks become diamonds under extreme pressure. Me? What about the other rocks? Scientist. Oh, they turn to dust. Well, thanks for that joke. Whoever submitted that. Yes. Sometimes stress can be good. I wanna be careful how I say that though um because when you are in a stressful situation, it's hard to see that sometimes but I think I'll just remind you when I said it's okay for kids to fail sometimes. I think in life when you are in a stressful situation, it's not enjoyable but some stressful situations, not all, some stressful situations can be good for you. Uh let's see here. Lolly says, wound and injury. Same meaning. Thanks, Bob. Sort of. A wound is usually like a cut. So, like if someone um like if I was in the kitchen and I cut myself with a knife, I would say it's a wound. Um an injury would be more like a broken leg or a broken finger. So, there you'll wanna look that up, Lolly Lolly, but there is a slight difference between the two. Key part. Pulled over by a cop can be stressful situation. Yes. I was pulled over once because I was speeding and I didn't have my wallet with me. And so, the police officer asked for my license and I didn't have it and he let me go without a ticket. Maria C. Hi, Bob. Long time no see. By the way, I'm reading from the chat right now. Um hi, Maria C. This is a very interesting lesson as I've been really stressed out lately. How have you been by the way? Um pretty good. Our we've had a really busy February um for a couple of different reasons. I don't wanna talk about all of them but uh I think it's sunnier out. The weather's becoming nicer. The days are getting longer and March will be less busy for us. So, I'm looking forward to that but thanks for asking Maria C. Rod says, thank you. No problem. Maria C. Hi, Rod, the English teacher. I don't know if Rod was saying thank you to me but no problem anyways, Rod. 
Uh, Musa says, it's fun to learn with Bob. Thanks, Musa. Lolly says, thanks, Bob. And Marwanto says, hi, Mr. Bob. Hi, Marwanto. Hey, let me grab another question. Um, Fred Le French. Hi, Bob. What is your solution to unstress yourself when you know that something will be stressful? Have a great day. Thanks. So, I wish when I was stressed, I wish I could have a nap but the worst thing about the worst thing about being stressed for me is that I can't have a nap. Uh, I just can't sleep when I'm stressed and I can't sleep very well at night. So, for me, it's it's just exercise. Exercise is uh is definitely the best thing to do for me when I am stressed. Audie in the chat says, hi, teacher Bob. Today, no question. Just say hi and would you like I would like to say I'm so happy to watch your live stream and chat to our nice friends in this channel. Thanks, Audie and thanks for thanks for being here and being in the chat. Hey, Dulio, good to see you. As you had said, moving is very stressful. It's not my case anymore because I have my own house now. Yes, moving is stressful. It's um when especially if you really like where you are um then moving can be stressful. Winter right. Hi, Bob. Would you advise a couple of books to us in order to let stress dissipate? Have a nice day. Well, the only book that springs to mind right now would be any book about Winnie the Pooh. So, Winnie the Pooh is a small bear and the Winnie the Pooh books are for kids but they're great books if you're stressed. You should read a Winnie the Pooh book. That would be my that would be my recommendation. Let's see. Stacy, hi, teacher Bob. How do you release your stress? I normally listen to music, pet my dog and eat delicious food. So, as I mentioned, I think exercise works for me but you, Stacy, those are really good things that you are mentioning. It has been shown that people who have a pet have less stress in their life. So, I think it's important to uh maybe walk your dog or sit with your cat uh to pet your pet. Uh, and then food, I don't know. When I'm stressed, I usually eat too much food but definitely listening to music is a great idea. Let's see here in the chat from Maria C. I think that what makes me feel more stressed is not to have control of things. Uncertainty. Yes, that would be I would agree, Maria. That's something that stresses me a lot. Maria says, I love Winnie the Pooh and then Eugene says, how is your flower plant? Plant flowers can release stress. Gardening, growing things, spending time in nature, all of those things are great uh, and have been proven to reduce stress by the way. So, thanks Eugene for those suggestions. Maria, exercise is a nice is a nice way of dealing with stress. Definitely. Musa, moving is also stressful because I don't feel cozy in a new home. When you move, it takes a while, doesn't it Musa, to make the new place feel like home. It doesn't feel like home right away. So, it takes a little while. Lolly, are you always stressed when you do a live lesson? Lolly, I'm stressed when I have technical problems and I haven't had technical problems for a long time. I should knock on wood. So, um, I'm not stressed doing the actual lesson. I think because I prepare all my slides and I just really like doing it but I'm always worried that something will go wrong with the internet or something like that. Uh Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. En France? Tu ne peux pas perdre ton emploi ou boulot. You can't lose your job overnight unless you make a very serious mistake. In any case, you are entitled to unemployment benefit after losing your job. That's a chance. Great day to you. We have similar rules in Canada but bosses don't always follow those rules. So, if you make a mistake at work, they need to um tell you what you did wrong and show you how to do it correctly and they need to be patient but that doesn't always happen. Uh let's see. Lolly says fingers crossed. Freddie says, hey, Bob, for marriage or divorce, some say better to be alone than badly accompanied. I think my feeling would be whatever is best for you is best for you. I know that sounds kind of funny. I think for some people, um they find a good person to be with and that's great. I think for some people, uh they enjoy life without having another person involved um because let's face it, when you're by yourself, you can do whatever you want whenever you want and you don't have someone else telling you whether you should do it or not. So, there's gotta be a lot of benefits to being single as well. Let's see. Maria C. Bob, do you still go for a walk every morning? Yes, I do. Another way of dealing with stress and to clear one's mind for sure. Uh let's see here. Um let's see here. 
not sure. There's a couple names in the next one. So, I'm gonna skip it. Um, let's see here. Andre Padron, hello, Mr. Bob. How do you manage stressful situations? What can you recommend in order to have less stress speaking English? So, I handle stressful situations two ways. Um, I mentioned exercise but I think you're talking a little bit more about something else and that would be being prepared. If I have a situation coming up that I know is going to be stressful, I make sure I'm prepared for that situation. So, if I need to teach a lesson to a new class, I make sure I'm prepared. If I was to um have a French conversation this afternoon, I would prepare. I would prepare by um thinking of some things that I can talk about during that conversation. So, for you, Andre, if you know you're going to be speaking English, try to think of something, one or two things every day that are new that you could talk about in that conversation. Let's see here. Back to the chat. Um Freddie Wolf, could you explain the difference between jail and prison? They are the same. You get put in jail. You get put in prison. We consider them in English to be the same thing. Let's see here. Julia or Julie. Sorry, Julie. Teacher Bob, why some of your old videos don't have subtitles? I think most of my videos do. I think some of the old live streams maybe don't. I have been pretty consistent since the beginning making sure that my videos like the shorter videos have subtitles. So, hopefully uh hopefully that helps. And then Eugene in the chat says uh drink a cup of wine. So, there certainly are ways to relax involving um other things you can consume. Um some people like to have a glass of wine. Maybe I don't wanna recommend anything but there are certainly other things that people do uh with substances. Um That's from Eugene. Musa, my lips are burning now. My tea is too hot. My tea is cold now, Musa. So, I have the opposite right now. Uh and Madi says, hello, Bob. Hi, Madi. Uh hope everyone doing well. Doing exercise regularly eliminates stress. Yes, it's so good to exercise. It's just sometimes hard to find the time to do it. Hey, let me switch chat back to normal mode and let's get back to the lesson. If there's a few questions from members yet, I'll try to fit them in. Where were we here? Okay. Dropping your phone. (laughs) I put this one in because I see this happen at school. About once a month, I will see a student drop their phone and they don't always break. Phones are actually quite durable now. But the look on someone's face when they're on their phone and then they drop it, they're the look on their face is like, oh no, I just dropped my phone because phones uh, are very, very expensive. It's very, very expensive if you drop your phone and break it. In fact, many students, well, not many, a few students have phones where the screen is cracked but the phone still works and then they probably breathe a sigh of relief that after dropping their phone, it still works. Um sending a text Uh, or a email or a text message to the wrong person. Um I don't know if you've ever done this. Um I've done this but usually the message isn't that big of a deal. But I found this um um picture on the internet. Accidentally text boss complaining I'm stuck in a pointless meeting. So, that would be stressful if you're in a meeting and your boss is talking and you think you're texting a colleague. Wow, this meeting is boring. Send and then you hear your boss's phone go and your boss is like basically looking at you. So, sending a message or text to the wrong person. This is a relatively new stressful thing. Um I mean uh 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't really do this but now we live in a world where we send messages so quickly. It can be quite stressful when you hit send and you realize you've sent a message to the wrong person a test. So, tests are very, very stressful. Um writing the test is stressful but the days leading up to the test are stressful as well. If you are planning to take an English test, um let's say you register to take an English test in June and we're sitting here in March. Your stress is very low but every week, your stress will get bigger (laughs) as the test approaches. Tests can be very stressful for people for sure. 
Uh, public speaking, this is a very common one. It can be very stressful to talk in front of people. Um, when you know that you have to give a speech, when you know you have to stand in front of 50 or 100 or 1000 people, it can be very, very stressful. Um, and uh, again, being prepared is a great way to reduce the stress a little bit. As someone mentioned, having an English conversation can be stressful. Again, two things that can reduce the stress of an English conversation. Number one, make sure you're having regular conversations each week with someone. Use Preply. There's a link in the description below. Um, find someone who you can pay to talk to you for 30 minutes or an hour each week. Um, that regular weekly practice re will reduce the stress you have when you speak English to someone else. And then number two, prepare for your conversations. Always try to think of things that you can talk about. A disagreement. So, sometimes you and a friend might disagree. Maybe you and your brother disagree. Maybe you and your spouse disagree. A disagreement is never enjoyable. Maybe you have a disagreement with someone at work and the two of you just don't get along. It can be very stressful to go to work every day knowing that someone you work with uh, disagrees with you uh, on a certain matter. A child moving out. So, this is when your kids get older and this would be something stressful that's unique to parents but all of us had parents. So, we might be somewhat familiar with this. When kids start to move out, when a kid goes to university or when a child is 17 or 18 or 19 and they move out of the house, it could be very stressful for the parents. It could be stressful for the kids but in my experience, I think the kids are more excited to move out and the parents are more stressed <laughs> when kids move out. Will they find a job? Will they do well at school? Will they find friends? Will they meet someone? All of those things are what parents think about when kids move out. Getting evicted. So, this is um, not the same as moving but this will cause you to move. When you get evicted, it means that your landlord, the person who owns the house or apartment that you live in has decided that you can't live there anymore and then you get evicted. So, when you live in an apartment, if you don't pay your rent, for a few months in Canada, you will get evicted. Um, sometimes the landlord needs to um, renovate the apartment and so they might evict you while they do some repair work in there but uh, definitely getting evicted would be super, super stressful. Math. <laughs> I put this one on here just to be funny but uh, some students find math very, very stressful. They like reading stories. They like uh, learning about history but math in particular can be very stressful for students. So, this is a bit of a joke but there's some truth to it. Math can be stressful for people. Debt. So, we talked about uh, going broke. We talked about having no money. Certainly, um, when you're in a lot of debt, it means you have borrowed money. So, maybe you have a loan that you took out a loan to buy a car and so, you owe the bank $10,000. Maybe you uh, took out a loan um, that's called a mortgage to buy a house and so you owe the bank money. When you borrow money, you are in debt and having a lot of debt can be very, very, very stressful. <laughs> in-laws. I put this one on here just to kind of be funny. I have really nice in-laws but um, when you get married, the parents and brothers and sisters of the person you marry are called your in-laws. So, you have your father-in-law, your mother-in-law and those kinds of things, brother-in-law, sister-in-law uh, and sometimes that can be stressful. Um, I luckily, uh, Jen's family is very, very nice. So, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, all my brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws are wonderful people um, but it can be stressful when you get married because sometimes maybe you have disagreements with your in-laws. Maybe you don't get along with your in-laws and that can cause a lot of stress. And to extend that, sometimes a family gathering. This is similar to the stress you would feel in a social situation but maybe once a year, your whole family gets together at one person's house. All of your uncles and aunts and cousins and grandparents and it, maybe it's just an awkward family gathering where maybe you don't get along with your uncle. Maybe you and your cousin have been arguing. 
So, family gatherings can be somewhat stressful for people. I talked a little bit about this earlier. Insomnia. Insomnia is when you go to bed and you just can't sleep. Maybe you sleep for an hour or two and then you're just wide awake for a couple hours. Maybe you go to bed and you just can't fall asleep till two or three in the morning. Maybe you go to bed and you sleep till three and you wake up and you just lay there with your eyes open for three more hours and then you get up and have breakfast. Insomnia is how we describe the inability to sleep at night and it can cause huge amounts of stress for people. And then the last one, being overweight. So, I think depending on you know how you live each day, depending on your daily routine, um sometimes people tend to be a little heavier than they should be. When they go to the doctor, the doctor might say, you need to lose 10 pounds or you need to lose 20 pounds or you need to lose five kilos, kilograms. Um so, being overweight usually results from having a stressful life. Your stressful life causes you to eat more because sometimes eating reduces stress but it can make you a little bit overweight. Um and so, it can just be stressful to be overweight. Not only that, when you're overweight, um I think you're stressed about your own health as well. So, um I'm honestly, I am overweight right now. Um I mean, maybe you don't think so but I know when I go to the doctor, he's gonna say that I'm 15 to 20 pounds overweight. Uh so, I'm I guess I should work on that. I should I guess this image is for me. So, uh, because I want to be a healthy, active person um for a very, very long time. I want to get old and I want to be healthy when I'm old and in order to do that, I need to make sure I stay fit. That means that I um don't get too overweight. Hey, that's the end of the lesson. Let's uh let's do a few questions and we will wrap this up. Let me see what time it is. I think I have time to do a few questions. I think there's only a few left and we'll be done. Uh let's see. Um maybe I'll just wrap it up now. The last questions aren't about Yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up. So, let me get to here. Anyways, thanks for joining me for this lesson. Um I'm sorry if I skipped some of your questions. I do usually only answer questions related to the topic. Um and there were a few questions where I just thought it would be better not to. So, hopefully, you understand that. Um thank you for being here. Thank you for having great conversations in the chat and enjoying each other's company. Thank you for spending some time just helping each other and learning a little bit of English. I do wanna thank Dave and Todd for moderating. They're great. Thank you to all of my uh members who are here. Once again, thank you for being members. Thanks to Lolly Lolly, Maria C, Freddie Wolf, Madi, Maria C, Adi the Thai. Let's see, Musa, uh, Eugene, of course. Uh, I know Rod was here earlier. Madi, I might have said already. Uh, I'm gonna say bye to Apple the Frog who has a play coming up. Hope you, you do well. Hi, Garov is here as well. Um, sorry if I don't say your name. I'm just scrolling back and uh, so I'm gonna say bye to Alex and to Lemon Cute as well. And I know Ario is here somewhere as well. Anyways, Have a great day. Thanks for hanging out and learning a little bit of English and uh I'll see you Tuesday with a new little lesson. I have a bit of a surprise. I have a surprise to show you. I'm gonna show you something in Tuesday's video. Um when you see it, you'll know what I mean. Thanks for the uh member for 22 months, Madi. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um well, Madi's saying thank you so much but I'm also saying thank you to Madi for being a member for that long. Uh anyways, have a good day everybody. Uh bye and uh, I'll see you next Friday with another live lesson.